There is one more important function for logarithmic paper, and in this instance the type of paper we're going to be using is actually semi-log paper. And semi-log paper has one standard scale and one logarithmic scale. Now we use semi-log paper when we're trying to determine the constants for formula of the type y equals ae to the kx. And if you recall, these are exponential growth and decay type functions. And we see these in various different aspects of engineering, particularly in things like charging and discharging of capacitors and that type of thing. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to use two different methods to find our values of a and k. Now in the first method, as mentioned, we're going to use semi-log paper. And when we use semi-log paper, we're going to plot our x-coordinates against our y-coordinates. So we're just plotting the, the original data, but this time on semi-log paper. Then when it comes to determining the k-value, we're going to take the gradient, but we're going to take a special sort of gradient. And that gradient, we're going to take the natural logs of the y-coordinates, but the x-coordinates are going to remain as their original values. And we'll talk about this a little bit more in a second. There's an important reason why it takes that format. And our a value is just going to be our y-axis intercept. We saw something similar when we did the log to base 10 graphs in the previous tutorial. Now the other method that we're going to use is we're going to take natural logs of each side of our original function, this one up here. And when we take natural logs of each side, our formula is going to become natural log of y equals the natural log of ae to the kx. But once again we can apply our log laws in order to simplify that. And the log law that we're going to apply is the natural log of a times b equals the natural log of a plus the natural log of b. We've seen that function before, we've seen that formula before, but previously we were using log to base 10. The formula remains unchanged, except this time it's for natural logarithms, or log to base e. So our function is going to become the natural log of y equals the natural log of a plus the natural log of e to the kx. But here's the important thing. Natural log and exponential are the inverse functions of each other. They undo each other. So simplifying this, we get the natural log of y equals the natural log of a plus kx. And it's this function here that we're going to be plotting on standard graph paper. Let's just compare that to the function of a straight line or the equation of a straight line, which states that y equals c plus mx. And what we notice now is we have our intercept with the y-axis for a linear graph being comparable with our intercept for the y-axis. This time our intercept is going to give us natural log a, which we'll then need to take the exponential of to determine a. But here's the important thing. The gradient of a linear graph m and the gradient of our linear graph k is just going to be a standard gradient this time. So this time, when we use this method, we'll find k by taking a standard gradient, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And we'll determine a, well, we'll get our intercept, and our intercept is going to be the natural log of a. That's going to be our intercept. And then we'll be able to determine our value of a by taking the exponential of that value. So we're using two methods. Method one is using semi-log paper. And the important thing to remember there relates to the gradient. We take the natural logs of the y-coordinates because our y-scale is going to be a logarithmic scale. And x2 minus x1 are the standard coordinates because that's a standard scale. Our intercept with the y-axis is going to give us our value for a. On our second method that we're going to use, when we take logarithms of each side, what we're going to need to plot this time is x against the natural log of y. Because we have an equation of the format natural log y equals natural log a plus kx. Now we're going to see this through examples. I'll work through method one and then I'll work through method two just to clarify the differences between the two methods. So here we have our set of x, y data. And we've already been told that this data represents a function of the form y equals a e to the kx or an exponential function. 
Now, just to demonstrate that this is in fact an exponential function and not a linear function, I'm just going to plot the xy scatter graph to show you. Insert xy scatter. And we can clearly see that that graph has a curve. It's not a straight line. Therefore, in order to determine our values of a and k, our original function up here, we're going to need to either plot this on semi-log paper or take natural logarithms of each side of the equation. Method one that we're going to look at is using semi-log paper. So here we have our semi-log paper and we know we need to plot our x-coordinates on the x-axis and we need to plot our y-coordinates on our y-axis. We see here that our x-coordinates run from 0 to 8. So on the x-axis we start at 0. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. And we see that our y coordinates range from 21.5 to 47.8. Now at the moment it appears that our y axis only runs from 1 to 5. But with this being logarithmic paper, we can adjust that. So instead of running from 1 to 5, it's going to run from 10 to 50. So we go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And now we're in a position to begin plotting our data. So when x equals 0, y equals 21.5. When x equals 1, y equals 23.8. When x equals 2, y equals 26.3. When x equals 3, y equals 29. When x equals 4, y equals 32.1. When x equals 5, y equals 35.4. When x equals 6, y equals 39.2. When x equals 7, y equals 43.3. And when x equals 8, y equals 47.8. Now hopefully you can see that that represents a linear function. So if we plot that as a linear graph, and then we can determine our values of a and k for this function. So the value of a is the intercept with the y-axis, which is this point here. And we can see that that point there is when x equals 0, y equals 21.5. Therefore, a in this instance is just 21.5. Next, we can determine our value for k. And our value for k is found by doing the natural log of y2 minus the natural log of y1, all divided by x2 minus x1. So we need to pick two points on our line for reference. And I'm going to pick this point here when x equals 7. And I'm going to pick this point here when x equals 2. So when x equals 7, that's going to represent position 2. And it's that set of data there that we're looking at. And when x equals 2, we have position 1, which is that data point there. Now it's simply a case of inputting our values. So we have the natural log of y2 or the y value at position 2, which is 43.3, minus the natural log of y1, or the y coordinate at position 1, which is 26.3, all divided by the x coordinate at position 2, which is 7. Note here I'm not taking natural logarithms, minus the x coordinate at position 1, which is 2. Now, if I run that through my calculator, what I will get is. 0.0997. Well, rounding that to one decimal place gives us 0 0.1, or k equals 0 0.1. So if we relate that back to our original function, which was of the form y equals a e to the kx, 
we can see now that y equals a, well a is 21.5, e to the k, well k is 0 0.1 as we found down the bottom here, 0.1x. And that is the function that the data over here on the left hand side represents y equals 21.5 e to the 0.1x. So we're going to move straight into our second method and for our second method the equation that we're looking at is the second one here where the natural log of y equals the natural log of a plus kx. And the two things that I'm going to need to plot against each other this time is x in the term at the end and I'm going to plot that against natural log y instead of directly against y. So the first step this time is to calculate our natural log y values. Now you could do this manually by doing natural log of 21.5 and inputting it here, natural log of 23.8 and inputting it here, and so on. But once again, I'm going to use the functions in Excel. So equals natural log of this cell here, which contains our y value. And I'm going to paste that formula down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set all of these to two decimal places, first of all, just to give us a little bit more range and accuracy. Okay, now this time, instead of plotting this manually on standard graph paper, I'm actually going to use the graphical functions in Excel for speed, but also to show you an alternative approach for solving these types of problems. So what I need to do is I need to highlight my x data because I'm plotting my x data, but I'm plotting my x data against my natural log y data. I'm going to insert an xy scatter graph. Now this is exactly the same as if I was doing it manually. There's no difference here. Really it's just speeding things up and it actually increases our degree of accuracy as it eliminates human error when plotting these points. So there's my function there. Now what we see this time is that we have a straight line graph when we plot x against natural log y. The next step then is to determine our a value and also to determine our gradient in order to give us k. So the first thing that we need to determine is our value of a. And if you recall, our intercept will give us natural log a. Well, our intercept is this point here, which is 3.07. When x equals 0, natural log y equals 3.07. So now we have natural log of a equals our intercept, 3.07. But we want a, not natural log a. Therefore, we need to do e to the x of each side, as that's the inverse function of natural logarithm. Now taking e to the x of the left-hand side will leave us a, and e to the x of the right-hand side will give us e to the 3.07 and we can resolve that in our calculators that gives us 21.5 to one decimal place. Next we can take our gradient and in order to take our gradient we need two points on this line and I'm going to take the two extremes I'm going to take the point when x equals 8 and I'm going to take the point that we already have marked there when x equals 0. So that's point 2, that's point 1 and we're looking at this line here when x equals 8 and this line here when x equals 0. Now for our gradient we have k equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. y2 is down here 3.87 and y1 we've already marked is 3.07 x2 is 8 and x1 is 0. Therefore our gradient or our value for k is going to be 0 0.8 over 8 which is just 0 0.1. Now these are the exact same values of a and k that we found using the previous method when we plotted this on semi-log paper. The outcome's the same, the method is different.